Hey guys, the long-awaited update 2.6 is finally public. Simply head to your store page, App Store for Mac or Microsoft Store for Windows or directly from the website and download the update. In version 2.6 for Affinity Photo, we got many long-awaited features. So let's dive into what's new. The first thing is object selection tool, a brand new tool on the tool list. Over here on the left, look like little owl. All right. And keep in mind, this tool use machine learning, some, some form of AI that is pre-trained. So it will not use your own data. It will not send your data out to Affinity. It's just pre-trained model. We actually need to turn on and install separately outside the update. So, if you try to use this tool for the very first time, you click on the tool, you will get this pop up and it will take you to settings. And in settings, there's a new tab called machine learning models when you need to click here, install. And there's another one over here, install as well separately. So that's really nice. It's very transparent that they keep it this as the separate thing. So if someone is totally against all of the AI help and smart machine learning tools, you can keep it uninstall and just do it old way. That's nice. And the second thing, if they make some changes to that model, they like, I don't know, purchase additional 10,000 pictures and retrain the model to be more precise next week, they can just drop a update for that certain model here and we can install the update instead of like in updating the whole software to version like 2.61 so that's really a smart choice all right so after you install your machine learning modules you will be able to use that so let's try to use it on this picture over here all right this should be easy because we got the main object here well separated and as you can see already just by selecting this tool, it's highlighting areas of the image that are detected automatically, all right? So we can just simply tap on it once and you will get selection straight away. I recommend to click refine after you get your initial selection. So you got a chance to see what is actually selected and Everything is deselected, everything that will be masked is now in this quick mask red shade. We still got chance to make a classic adjustment so we can add foreground or background. So if something supposed to be selected, mark it with the foreground. If something should be skipped, you can mark with the background. We got this classic refined selection sliders here when we can move the border of selection in or back out this can be super handy if you got like grass or hair all right you can smooth the selection we can add the feather so the selection will be a bit blurry on the edge okay we can do all of that from here and then output we can decide what kind of output do you like let's make a brand new layer of the mask click apply and here it is Let's zoom in a bit. We got decent selection, even those close areas that are giving troubles to this auto selection tools because it's kind of close area with different color. But in our case, it's well selected and we got hair. Take a look. The hair is also well selected. The final test is to put a very strong color behind this one. So let me just draw a shape. with some kind of strong green color, I'll place it behind and take a look, very decent selection with this quick selection tool. So object selection tool is now in the tool panel, a brand new tool here. You can use it after you pre-install all of the machine learning modules. All right, and I think that's the biggest change. That's something we've been requesting since version 1.5 and it's finally here, all right. So we could end this video right now. That's the biggest change that will speed up your workflow. But let's dive a bit deeper, all right? So very much related to this object selection machine learning, we got another option. So the second thing is that we can actually use the subject selection. So without using the tool panel, we can head to 
select at the top and you will see a new feature select subject and it will put the auto selection on the image based on what they think is the main subject of it so it's very similar as you can see I select a more challenging image this time we got the grass we got dog here all right and I don't have refined selection anywhere don't worry you can still get the proper refine selection just select any selection tool really any tool like lasso tool you have the refine button over there click on it and again this time the selection was not so perfect so we can use the background mode to mark what's supposed to be a backdrop not a part of the subject so I'm marking this with the red color and they improving my selection based on my input all right so you don't need to take what they give you every time you can use refine selection even with the subject selection all right so we refine our selection and again the best way the non-destructive way is to get the output as new layer with the mask apply and here it is we managed to separate this dog very quickly all right that's nice so that's the second thing subject selection op option the third improvement worth mentioning is a color picker now it's way faster because when you got like object selected let's select this shape here if you grab the color picker in the past and like drop on this color here oh now we got the color straight in that active object in the past the color will only go straight to this wheel here and i must select it from the wheel so I need additional click, I need to move my mouse back to the color wheel, but now with active selections, we can put the colors in very quickly. This is such a small but welcome improvement. All right, so that's our improvements for color picker. Number four, that so many of you have been waiting for, we got more raw format supporters, more camera supporters, more lenses recognized, and all of those are on a long, forum thread in the official website so i'm dropping this qr code here if you wonder that your camera is finally supported please scan the qr code it will take you to the official website with this long list long topic that is always updated with all of the cameras and lenses supported and like always like every update there will be somebody in the comment section complaining that oh my camera is still not supported so please you're welcome you can complain right now so we know that your camera is still not supported all right so with every update they updating this raw support and more and more cameras are supported with each update but the list is never completed there are still some cameras not supported if it's bother you want to share with others warn others you can do a little warning comment below all right so that's of course with this update as well they add more cameras and the last thing I want to mention in this video is overall UX improvements. So you got better user experience, better usability. The list is pretty long. Take a look. But if you focus on raw layers, you may notice that most of those changes are actually somehow related to raw images. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to give the raw images the same properties as uh, image layers so all of those tools that we can previously use with the regular jpegs like this is the special like the dog I, I got here before right remember this dog if you hover your mouse here you will discover that this is type of the layer is called image all right and image i can use all of my tools from the tool panels all of the adjustments without any troubles and in case of the raws in, in last version of the program very often you will need to kind of rasterize your raw into image layer first and then you can apply those tools and adjustments and they are working on it really hard to keep the raw layer as the raw layer as long as we can so now we can use for example liquify persona on the raw layers tone mapping persona we can use brush tools on the raw layers without destroying them the non-destructive behaviors all right so it seems like they try to make a raw layer more powerful that's kind of the main focus here in the ux improvements so we can keep working on the raw layer a bit longer before we are forced into rasterizing that and there are also some smaller improvements here and there that you can see from this list something that i'll mention in the future when doing the regular tutorials all right so we got multiple 
user experience improvements many of them we've been asking for for a while now so it's finally here all right so here are the five more imp most important features of the new version of affinity photo the biggest thing is now we can do a machine learning ai selection you could say that's the biggest and it's going to be also triggered by subject selection from the top menu don't forget that you can still refine your selections yourself now the color picker is way faster picking the colors directly instead of just adding them to the color wheel for us so that's a nice improvement more cameras and lenses are recognized by the software and we got all of those smaller improvements this time focusing on raw layers all right so that's what's new in affinity photo i'm going to cover publisher and also designer in the future videos and like always at the very end i will do one big long video about missing feature when we're going to the change log everything that was added since version 2.0 until now and then what we still wish to be added later on so stay tuned for that that's the one when we complain all right so hold on <laughs> wait for the last one and then we can complain about missing features all right i hope you enjoyed this new update see you in the next video